welcome or welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by, I hope you're well. I'm very excited to start this vlog because my most anticipated read of the year turned up today and it is Gallant by V Schwab, of course. You guys know I'm a sucker for V Schwab. I say it's my most anticipated, it's kind of like joint because Grady Hendrix has a book coming out later this year which I'm also really excited for, um, but you know, they're tied. So one of my uh, most anticipated, I guess, although, you know, it's in that number, it's tied in the number one spot. What am I talking about? It's tied in the number one spot is what I'm trying to say and I've been really really excited to read it. I've heard some really good things so far. Um, So I'm just going to get the little like negative thing out of the way. When I opened it, this is the Waterstone Special Edition, when I opened it the first thing I saw and I don't think it's going to show up on its camera very well is this kind of like black line that runs right down the middle of the pages of the stenciled edges. The stenciled edges look really nice but the pages are actually like I don't want to spoil anything but the pages are kind of like coloured dark to I don't know to to look like old I guess and um that has just kind of left this dark line all the way through the stencil and it was the first thing I saw when I unpackaged it I did see Ro from Wandering Through Worlds also talked about it on um discord on the patreon uh and I was like ah damn so it's just just one of those things it's not like a a mistake it's just the way it is and I just thought that was such a shame because if they knew that maybe they could have gone for like some dark sprayed edges and um, maybe gone for like to match this rather than the red I mean it is very pretty it's just I'm very aware it's there but you know that's a small thing the rest of the book is gorgeous it looks like this under the dust jacket I'm a little bit worried to read it because I always take my dust jackets off and it is very white but that is beautiful and the end pages are also lush and it is signed. So I'm really, really excited for this book. Like I said in my TBR, I don't actually remember what it's about. I don't need to know, if I'm honest. So, um, yeah. Come with me as I read a book by my favourite author. And let's just hope that I love it as much as everything else I've read by her, because otherwise this is going to be a very different vlog than what I was expecting it to be. <laughs> it has been a hot minute since I filmed the opening to this vlog. Let me give you some updates. So first of all, Danny has COVID and we found this out as I was getting ready to leave for a hen do, like an overnight stay hen do um, on Saturday. And I left quite early in the morning because I had like an hour and a half journey and I kind of got up when I was getting ready and he was like, oh, I don't feel very well, but I've done an LFT and I'm negative. And then I just heard from the bathroom, no, I'm not. I then had to like message everyone that was going, make sure they were happy with it because it was like, I was going to be sharing a room with someone, I wanted to make sure that everyone was comfortable, got the go ahead, mad rush to kind of get going on the road. The Hendy was lovely, we had a really really good laugh, it was really good fun. That bed was so comfortable and I miss it so much because since Sunday night, uh, it is now Wednesday night, this will be my fourth night on an air mattress in the living room. <laughs> because obviously whilst I was away, Danny was in the bed and he has Covid, so rather than risk it, I'll just I'll just stay down here. I don't want to get it. I'm the last one in my family not to get it and I'd like it to stay that way. So I have like a nice big blow up mattress and it's actually okay. Like me and Danny have slept on it together before at my mum's and it was, we were like, oh God, it's not very comfortable. When it's just you, it's great. You've got quite a lot of space. It's quite comfortable. I'm absolutely fine. I would rather that than kind of risk getting the Rona. Um, but then just life's just been very hectic. I just did my mid month wrap up, which you might have seen and there was not a single book from my March TBR on there because I haven't read any of them and it's the 16th of the month. We're two days, two days into Magical Readathon. I haven't picked them up. Gallant does not fit either of the prompts. So I should probably like pull my finger out and do some reading. Um, I'm on Ashley Sprints now. I say on, I'm watching Ashley Sprints now, but I'm not reading. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Let me give you a quick update on Gallant so far. Um, I'm going to say spoilers just in case. You know, I think this is going to be a spoilery vlog. Hello, editing Gemma here. Um, I was very, very close to scrapping this vlog entirely because when I sat down to edit it, I realised that I am basically just explaining the plot to you and I don't know how to fix it. So shout out to Becca from Becca Fowl um, for basically talking me down <laughs> and giving me the idea to speed up the plot 
explanation because I can't take it all out because then there'll be no vlog. And also many of the points that I do make won't make sense. <laughs> so all of the little plot descriptions are going to be sped up because apparently I don't know how to not chat shit. So <laughs> I'm sorry, this vlog is a disaster. I, and enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> So we are following this young orphan girl called Olivia, she's about 14, and when she was two, her mum disappeared, died, we don't know, uh, but she was left on kind of the doorstep for the school for girls. She is entirely mute, she can't speak at all, and a lot of people think that that means that she must be quite stupid, but she's very, very intelligent, she's very feisty, really, she's quite a feisty character, I love her. And she was taught sign language by this one matron from the school who then left, and no one else is bothered to learn sign language so that they can communicate with her, so they just treat her like an outcast. So you spend a couple of chapters with her at the school, just kind of learning about the people that she has to deal with, and how they treat her, and it's, it's not nice. And you also find out then that she can see these ghouls, like um, half-formed ghost type creatures, she calls them ghouls, and she's always been able to see them, she just thinks that they're at the school, which I think is called What's it called? Merciful? What's it called? Merciless? Merciful? Merrillance. So not merciful, merciful, merciful at all. Merrillance. Um, so she thinks that the ghosts are just kind of like a byproduct of the school. Then one day she gets called into the mistress's office, like the lead matron, and she tells her that they received a letter from an uncle that she didn't know existed, and he would like her to go to the family home. He doesn't know where she is, he just has this feeling she's still out there somewhere, and he's been sending letters to all the schools, all the orphanages and things like that, so that he can try and find her and get her to come home. So the return address on the back of the envelope gives the name of the house as Gallant, and Olivia knows this name because her mother left behind like a journal. And at the very back of this journal is a letter to Olivia where she's like, Oh, you'll be safe as long as you don't go back to Gallant. But Olivia doesn't really have a choice. She doesn't want to stay in Merrillance, and they are shipping her off, so they put her in a car and she drives like a whole day to this massive house but it's not not creepy it's not that it's creepy although it does have creepy things it's just that it's not quite as opulent as it seems when you first arrive and she's kind of greeted with shock her uncle that wrote the letter is dead um there's a man a woman and her cousin left the house and that's it and her cousin is not happy to see her and he starts talking about this curse and how she should leave and he's trying to get rid of her and the other two are trying to kind of make her feel welcome and look after her but at the moment Matthew, her cousin, is very adamant she needs to leave, but she doesn't have anywhere to go. And she's kind of being kept there by Hannah, the lady who is kind of seeing whether Olivia wants to go. And when Olivia's like, no, I want to stay, she is saying that oh, the car can't be sent yet. It's going to be like a few days. And it was trying to work on Matthew to make him a bit more understanding. So I'm 100 pages in. That's kind of where I am, although we've had a few things. So like Hannah knows her mum, who was called Grace, and she's been telling her a few bits. There's a couple of like little plot points that have been dropped in that I need to wait for, like to learn more about. There's some creepy stuff happening in the house. So the ghouls that she thought were at Maryland are not just at Maryland, they are here too. And these ones seem quite a bit stronger, like more formed. So she has, and this is spoilery, so I know I said, but. She's seen her mother, so she now knows her mother must be dead. She's seen her uncle, who prevented her from going out in the dark. And that's another thing, like, they're really worried about the dark. Like, as soon as it gets dark, it gets shut, the house gets shut up. And not just a little bit, like, they don't just lock the doors. There's like, the big shutters that they put in place. They lock everything, doors, windows, everything. You stay inside after dark. Um, and she tried to go outside into the garden, and her uncle's ghoul, like, came charging into the house and frightened her off, basically, and then guarded that door all night. And, like, she's seen him guarding places. So there's, like, some really, like, creepy little elements, which I'm loving. And I think that's about everything so far. Oh, apart from this, like these chapters that are written from the perspective of the master. And this seems to be from like a parallel house. So she finds this sculpture of these two versions of Gallant that are kind of like linked. Like if it was a big sculpture that if you, kind of, you could move it within rings and when you moved it, the houses would move in unison, but always kind of like against each other, if that makes sense, kind of like that. Um, and there is this one stretch of wall in the garden which doesn't seem to be linked to anything. It doesn't seem to ever have been linked to anything. And it really looks like a ruin, but they're really fixated on keeping it patched up so like if there's a crack in the wall they, they go out to to fill it up um so i believe that's kind of like the wall between oh my god oh, she came back from her sprints and frightened me <laughs> i believe that is the wall between the two versions of gallant as it were <sighs> that's probably a bit much for the update but i'm really loving it i'm really loving the creepy moments i love olivia so far it's now about 20 past nine i want to try and get at least to page 200 but I really think I could finish it today if I pull my finger out and do the reading because like I wanted to start this quite early today and like I say it's now 20 past nine but yeah I'm gonna go and read this now well I'm gonna chat with Ashley for a bit and then I'm gonna go read it and then I will update you <laughs> place where they told you what to chase told you how to run the race every move was on the page but i didn't like their way had to fight and misbehave had to find a way to change had to leave to find my way caught up in a daydream i beat my mind up there almost daily it's how i pass time no opinions safely it's how i understand what i want in this place see because everybody want to tell you bad things what could go wrong what fame brings but success is a finicky thing and if you ain't sure no it'll never be I don't wanna let myself down, myself down I don't wanna let myself down, myself down
I don't have to plan it I can go change my fate You won't understand it All alone, that's okay People, I can't stand them They don't want me to change Keep me where I'm standing And I don't wanna be where I am And I want something more Take a chance It could be possibly my last dance My last dance I really love how the writing can be like so ominous over such small things like um she's gone to check out this wall that is like the dividing wall to somewhere to wherever so matthew has finally relented and told her like a snippet of information but not really told her much just that there always has to be a prior um which is their family at gallant to guard the gate or something and uh she's kind of just been checking out the wall where the gate is i think and a stone falls out of the wall and it's been pushed out by like a weed she kind of pushes it back and as she's walking away she can hear more stones falling and it doesn't sound like anything but the way it's written makes it feel so ominous and she also put her eye up to like a crack between the wall and this door um in the wall and uh i was not okay it really put me on edge because it's not like scary it's just this general ominous vibe throughout i love it so i've just made it up to part four and that part was wild there's, there's so much revealed in like 30 pages and what i really like about it is you were given a hint and then you were like oh does this mean that and it wasn't like dragged out it was like a couple of pages later confirmed so you're not it's not being treated so much as like a twist as a straight up reveal is that if that makes sense i don't know if that does make sense i don't know how much detail i should go into with my little sorry i'm using a thing and i can't get very good frame does that help yeah hi <laughs> i don't know how much detail i should go into in these little updates because i've never done a spoilery vlog before um but I guess if I pitch it as being spoilery and I say it's spoilery and I have my little thing to say it's spoilery, you guys should be well aware. So, so here we go. <laughs> spoilery bits. It's just been revealed that the person on the other side of the wall is basically like death. And he keeps talking about, he's, there's, well, he keeps talking about. So he's meant to be death, right? This, this being is meant to be death. And when we've met him, them. I don't know if it's a guy. They keep on the master, so I'm going to go with male pronouns. So when we've seen him, um, he's had like three shadows and there's like a gap between two of them, which implies there's meant to be four. And her mother went across the wall um, to kind of see whether all the stories that she'd been told were true. And she saw death and one of the shadows saw her and let her go. And that is Olivia's dad. I love that. And it's like death and the four horsemen. I absolutely love that. I love that. And also I said earlier that her mother's journal has like writing and then this artwork that she's done. And that was the father's way of communicating. He obviously didn't write. So she would write and then he would respond with a picture, which I love because that's also what her and Matthew are doing because Matthew's the cousin. He can't read. So again, it's really hard for them to communicate. So obviously Olivia can't speak and now he can't read and he doesn't know sign language. So luckily um, Edgar, who's like one of the, I want to say he's like, not servant, but he's like a house, he's helping run the house. Um, he knows sign language from when he was in the army, I think. So he's able to kind of like translate for her. But then there's that really frustrating thing of when they don't want to tell her something because the house has loads of secrets they just don't look at her it's just like it's so frustrating for her and also that kind of makes it because you know like you know like sometimes when you're reading a book right and you know that somebody knows more about it and you're like oh just ask them and then you'll know or they are like purposely not telling her like this is a really cool take on it because she can't ask because she, she can't like shout at them and demand answers and her ways of being able to communicate are being taken away from her so they can very easily because they obviously don't want to tell her these like family secrets they can very easily just pretend that she hasn't asked because they just don't look at her. But what I was saying, sorry, tangent, what I was saying is because she can't speak and he can't read, she can't write to him. So when she was trying to ask him some questions in the garden, she was like drawing him pictures. And then that's how her dad and mum were talking. I just thought that was a really interesting parallel. There was something said in like this, when she's just trying to decipher the journal again. And there was a part of it where the mum says that she took a molar and the last little update from the master or death was that he is missing a molar. So obviously he had something to do with it. He's taken the father, whether he killed him or not, I don't know yet. I've just realised this is a really flattering angle. We're all friends here. This is fine. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna finish it tonight. Now, um, I'm on page 175, guys. 
it's nearly 11 o'clock I don't know there's 15 minutes left of this sprint I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go out of my bed um, and then maybe I'll read a bit in bed yeah. right let's actually do that these little updates have been long because for the first time I'm not worried about accidentally spoiling it I'm just giving you my thoughts so maybe no one will watch this because it's a new book and not many people have read it yet and they don't want to be spoiled. Did not think this through. Well, it's done now. <laughs> Maybe people will look it up after. I don't know. But I'm, I'm doing it. So, right, let me come read. God, stop distracting me, guys. Jesus. Prints are over. I'm going to set up my bed. And then I might give you a quick update and then do a little bit more reading. I'm definitely not going to finish it now, though. It's half 11. But I'll read a little bit. Um, But let me just... Let me just have somewhere to lie down. One sec. some miracle forest pause to go back to so let me quickly update you on what I've read since we last spoke so even though it was only like half an hour ago I've forgotten what I said where I was up to but I think I had said about her figuring out that it was her dad's pictures in the journal well she's gone to the other gallant guys I have to keep reminding myself she's a 14 year old child <laughs> okay and she's just trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> she's just been told repeatedly don't go near the wall well I mean not so much repeatedly but from everything in the journal from what people have said you would just stay away from the wall and she played around with the journal because it turns out there's these two grooves on the front of the journal and that's where her mum and dad were passing it through um, the gap between the door and the wall, like where the hinges are. And it was like these two grooves had been put into the cover because of the amount of times they passed it back and forth running over the bolts. And um, so she decided to, she figured that out by putting the journal in the gap. And it went through and then when she went round to retrieve it she has ended up in the other gallant and she can't find the end of the wall so she's trying to figure out how to get back over but she's gone into the house <laughs> there's she's already come across a ghoul in the garden i'm nervous for her because she's now in the house and one of the kind of updates from death i say death because I'm not 100% convinced that it is actual death. Lee Schwab likes to do this to us. <laughs> In one of the updates from death, um, he said that he wants her. And it's something to do with this molar, this tooth that's been taken, that her mum took from him. I don't know, but I want to know. And I'm really mad that I didn't start this earlier so I could finish it tonight. So what am I going to do? Because I literally, I can't, I'm so tired. I'm going to try and get to pair part five. I'm going to try and get to part five, which is like 220 something, and I'm on 188, so it's like what? Oh, it's too late for maths. It's too late for maths, like 40 pages? Not 40 pages, it's around that. I'm going to try. Let's try. <laughs>
myself. Because I reckon if I had another hour, I could have finished this tonight. <sighs> but anyway, that's neither here nor there. We're not quite finished yet. We've only got about 80 pages left. Part five. No, I'm up to part five. So part four. Gang. Let me gather my thoughts. So I said that she'd gone across the wall. <sighs> but she found that. So obviously she saw death. And the three remaining horsemen <laughs> and there was like a boring scene and she was she watched everything that happened that went down and then she made just the smallest noise because everything on that side of the wall was so quiet one of the horsemen i'm just gonna keep referring to them i, I don't think that's what they are but i'm keep referring to them one of the like horsemen um heard her and was like chasing her through the house honestly like it was really tense like i felt really tense because she doesn't make any noise but she they, she keeps making a point that humans are noisy so like she started trying to be really quiet and then once she had to get away she's like her feet were making loads of noise and the, everything was like the door shutting was like a crack and and it was just like made you really tense because the world was so quiet so you knew that it was gonna be really easy to track her and she panicked and she ran to a room that she knew but it's the only room in the house that doesn't have like any windows or doors and so she was like trapped and she dropped her mum's journal and she was like she had been um she said that she doesn't like pray because she doesn't believe in god and she used to just pretend when she was at the school but she kind of does pray to something she's just like basically asking for help and while she's trying she's trapped in this room um a ghoul opens a secret door now the whole way through this book the ghouls haven't been able to touch her right so the ghouls can't touch her but then this ghoul can and kind of like pulls her through and is like manages to convey to her that you know she you ask for help so then he guides her to like a secret door and while she's running like they appear and they try to they try to catch her and she asks for help again and oh god this, like, this whole chase scene was just crazy and she manages to get back to the door and you kind of think like maybe like they've seen her but he hasn't but then she turns around and looks back and he's just watching her on the balcony and she starts banging on the door and she finally manages to go get through it and then Matthew comes tearing across the grounds and closes the door and it's a big fight and he's told her she's got to leave and that but she said something well she didn't say it. she thought something that I thought was bang on here it is I'm prior to she wants to tell him I belong here as much as you I have seen things you cannot see and done things you cannot do and if you had told me the truth instead of treating me like a stranger in your house, then maybe I wouldn't have gone across. Maybe I could have helped. She lifts her hands to sign the words, but Matthew doesn't give her the chance. They withheld information. You know, if someone had explained it to her, because Matthew used his blood to lock the door, right? So it's like a, a blood thing, and that's how she managed to get through, because she's got prior blood, so she could open the door. And if someone had just explained all this to her, you know? Someone had just explained it. Anyway, I am loving this so, so much. Like, I, I don't, I think this is a terrible vlog, if I'm honest, because I'm, I just explaining the book to you. Maybe I'll edit some of this out. But, I mean, I did say it was going to be spoilery, and this is the way I'm chatting about it. But if you are watching this, I'm guessing that you've re read the book. So, I've never done a vlog like this before. So, if you have any pointers, how much information should I give? How much information is too much? How much is not enough? I don't know. I don't know how vague to be. I don't know whether to just tell you all of my thoughts because it's spoilery or not. So, let me know. Anyway, I need to go to bed because I'm so tired. But I'm so pissed that I can't finish this tonight because I really thought I was going to. I mean, look how close I am. I know it doesn't actually look that close, but it's such a fast read. Like, it's so quick. Like, I've read... Oh, God. I've read, like, over 100 pages again tonight. Never mind. Oh, hello there. Never mind. I'm going to go to bed. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to finish this tomorrow. And that's worrying. Because we're almost another week through March. And... I just need to read other books. I'm going to try. And if not, I will finish it on Friday. And update you. Okay. Night. Hello. It has been many a day since last we spoke. I did actually finish Gallant the day after my last clip, whenever that was. I can't remember, but I just haven't had a chance to kind of sit down and talk to you about it. When I left, I think she'd just come back from across the wall the first time. 
So <laughs> while she was over there, I've got to say that she found this like child or she saw a child in a fountain and he seemed to be tied up and she couldn't tell whether he was alive or dead. And also I've got to say that when she was on the other side of the wall, she could bring back things that were dead, like she could bring them back alive. There was like a dead flower and she brought it back and then she landed on some animal bones and they came back. And I think it's all to do with prior blood because what we found out after that was that there is like a blood oath that the prior family have put in place to keep the divide closed. Um, the house was already there. They kind of got called to the house. They don't know who originally built it. But there was at one point there was a big fight between the priors and him because death managed to get over. And there was a big fight to push him back through. Some of the priors got left to the other side, which is the ghouls that she saw over there. And the rest kind of have been trying to keep the gate locked. But death has been able to get into their heads. So a lot of priors have committed suicide or been driven over to the other side of the wall, been driven to madness because he gets them through their dreams. Um, which is why Matthew, when he has uh, dreams, they actually tie him to the bed because otherwise he will go over. Death will be able to kill him. Death wins. She has this big discussion with Matthew about what it is to be a prior, what it means, what the situation actually is. So she finally has an understanding and he then finally shows her a portrait of his family and she sees his brother and realises it is the boy that she saw on the other side. So she tries to explain that to him. They finally realise that there's a chance that he might be alive and Matthew is very keen to go over himself but Olivia's like, dude, a strong wind will blow you over. She pushes him over to make her point and she goes back to the other side. So she can't find him to start with. She does get captured. There's this scene, like big scene between the two where it's revealed that her father was actually made from a part of death because death will use pieces of himself to make these entities, whatever they are. So one of the soldiers is made from like a collarbone and I think something in the wrist as well. And they have armor to protect those parts. And her father wore a helmet and was made from the molar. Do you remember the molar from before? Okay, so that was him. But because he'd been formed for a long time, he kind of developed his own will. So he was his own person, her father, but he was still a part of death. So as they kind of moved away from Gallant, her father began to fade until it was just the molar that was left. And it also means that there is a part of kind of like death. There is a link between Olivia and death. There is part of him in her, as it were, which sadly might have been how he could get to her mum so far away and drove her insane or drove her to my, whatever. We, do, we still don't really know whether she committed suicide or whether she just died. We don't know, but it was she had Olivia with her that he was able to reach her which is really sad for Olivia to have to kind of carry that to find that out at 14. Um, anyway <laughs> so there's he's kind of revealing all this and telling her stuff about the other side and she manages to break free because she realizes that she because she has like part of death in her she can kind of control things on that side and she convinces one of the soldiers to fight for her and she runs and she finds the brother I can't remember his name she finds the little brother in the basement and they run to the wall and you're like go 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 and um Matthew opens the, the door and it's like that is not my brother and it was really creepy this moment where this child because he had been like very quiet as everything is on that side of the wall very quiet but he had like been quite afraid and been like trying to get to her and then he's like just like clinging to her and like crawling up her and it was really like quite creepy and Matthew comes through the gate and like closes it with behind him and like locks it but there is so much like dirt and crap on this side that when he puts the blood on it doesn't actually go to the iron and death manages to fight through and go over to the other side and as he walks through the garden everything is just dying around him they're trying desperately to kind of like fight through and they they fight off the soldiers um are trying to get away from them and Matthew goes after death and all this stuff is happening and th there's vines that have grown over the door so it can't be closed so Olivia's trying to break down the vines and she doesn't realize that one of the soldiers is like right coming at her and Matthew's calling her but she's like focused on the vines and he jumps in front of her and saves her life and it's super sad <laughs> it's super sad because he was so like he'd suffered quite a lot and he was really I think he was had become quite frail but he was still strong if that makes sense and even though he wasn't sure about her, he was willing to kind of throw himself in danger to protect her. And I think that slowly they had formed like a bond, as it were. So she manages to call up all the ghouls, all the ghoul priors from her side. And he's like, I told you that the ghouls fight for me. And she's like, yeah, on your side of the wall. And he kind of realizes, oh, I think she can, he can hear her thoughts as well. I think they can, turn, I think I remember that. It's been a few days and my brain's not doing so good. So she's basically like on your side, maybe. And all of the ghouls on our gallant side managed to fight death back through the gate again. And she locks it. And then she goes to Matthew and he dies. And then that's, that's kind of the end, except the end is that Olivia stays at gallant. So it's now Olivia, Edgar and Hannah. And she is tending gallant and she is fortifying the lock. But death is still on the other side like he's not been defeated and I saw I think it was Rosie said that she needs to talk to me about the end but I haven't messaged her because I'm 
crap and I forgot but I want actually really want to speak to her about the end and find out what her thoughts are because my thoughts are that it's really quite poignant because you can't defeat death you can't you can't conquer death um eventually you know it will come for everyone you cannot fight time and so I think if she'd have been able to or if they had been able to defeat him that would have been a little bit strange like there always has to be death it's like in supernatural you can kill death but all it means is that somebody else will become death because there has to be death how many times can I say death <laughs> so to me that was like a perfect ending I don't want her to be the last one you know because Matthew was the last one and he was kind of you know whatever happens happens maybe it will only end when the prior bloodline ends but now obviously she's there and I don't know whether I would prefer for her to be the last and then see what happens when she when she does eventually die like does that mean that no one can ever open that gate again or does that mean that the everything crumbles and death would just be able to walk through anyway we still don't really know whether it is better to have a prior there or not which is quite interesting. I like how open-ended it is. And then a couple of just thoughts over the overall book. I absolutely love the writing style. I absolutely loved Olivia. I thought maybe Matthew could have used a bit more fleshing out, but I still liked him as a character and I enjoyed Hannah and Edgar in the background. Um, I really liked kind of the emphasis on the dark because as soon as it kind of got dark, death got stronger. So they kind of like started banning down the hatches and it was very much like you don't go out after dark you have to put the shutters up you stay inside and it made me think of like this like inherent fear that humankind has of the dark and I think there's like that always these theories going around that why is it that all humans at least one point in their life are scared of the dark what is in our like collective memory that has us being afraid of something being in the dark. Um, and I thought that was played upon quite well in this book. And I also really liked that there was, it was never really clear when it was set. Like I knew it was set in England because the girls schools were all like Bristol, Newcastle. I don't actually know if that was true, but they were like, they were like British towns, UK towns, but there was like cars, but there was no electricity. There wasn't phones. So I'm like, is it like the early, 1900s late 1800s I'm not sure I'm not sure and I kind of liked that I liked that it was a bit ambiguous the general ominous feel throughout was so good I really enjoyed the ghouls I thought they were really cool it wasn't your typical ghost because you know how ghosts are often described as being just like looking like how they died in this the ghouls are only really like half formed and some of them are like rotting so it was quite it was quite creepy um which I really thought worked overall i thought it was really really good i'm giving it a five stars because of course when i was reading it i genuinely thought it might be my new favorite schwab i think this might be tied in like second place after a dark shade of magic because let's be honest i don't think anything will beat a dark shade of magic because that book holds such a special place in my heart but i think this is like on a par with addy however i do want to reread both at some point um i would actually quite to reread my schwab in like order um and tab them because i don't really tab but i would like to i would like to tab schwab and grady hendrix but anyway that's a that's a side note <laughs> uh, overall five stars highly recommend really enjoyed it i i honestly don't know how i feel about this vlog but i'm gonna go with it i think that i have spent too long explaining the plot but you guys let me know i i don't i don't know i don't know whether i'm very good at vlogging <laughs> I think maybe single book vlogs are not for me because, like I say, I spend too much time on the plot. But it, anyway, it's done. Also, uh, side note, bear in mind I've just said that I don't think this video is very good. Awkward. Um, <laughs> this, when this goes up, this will be my 100th video on my channel, uh, which is very exciting. I'm not really sure how that happened because when I started out I thought maybe I would post like once a week and then here I am on video 100 and I'm absolutely loving it here and that's all down to you guys being awesome so 
yay 100, here's to the next 100. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I really hope that you've read Gallant if you watch this or you have no intention of reading Gallant because oh my god, you know everything and I'm sorry. Um, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Um, avoid spoilers in the comments just in case. I don't know if anyone would be reading the comments on a vlog that says it's very spoilery but just in case. Um, or my socials down the bottom if you want to DM me and um, talk about it. That's cool too. I genuinely would like to know your thoughts on how this video was done because I honestly don't think it's good. So <laughs> if you've made it this far and you just want me to know you're here, that purple heart is always appreciated and genuinely thank you so much for watching. <laughs> if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to see more bookish content from me, remember to hit that button, leave a like if you want to and I will see you in the next one. Bye!